So as many of you know, I was on Game Theory Live last night with my video, Why I Now Hate Game Theory, and MatPat himself responded to all of the points in my video. Oh my god, I can honestly not say I ever saw this coming. I mean, MatPat was actually super respectful of me and my points throughout the entire argument, even though they perhaps weren't word of the best, and... That actually spoke a lot about him. He could have just as easily used his platform as a way to try and destroy my point of view by sending his fans my way, which inadvertently he did. However, I feel like there were plenty of things that do need to be cleared up. Number one, MatPat addresses the content as being underdeveloped by saying that the theories now have more than they ever did in the past and the past theories would be quote-unquote diet theories today. That isn't the case at all. I mean, I for one obviously feel that the older theories were much better than the new ones, and that's alright. He then goes on to say that one out of 190 episodes that people didn't like, which he was referring to the Sands' Nest theory, basically doesn't mean anything. Except for the fact that he ignores how several of his most prominent theories have been easily debunked by many people. And if you want the proof, like a lot of them have been saying, Here's an entire website that lists all of the inaccuracies or just straight up misinformation and bad math or science in game theory videos. I'll even link that down in the description. And I know exactly why they did this too, and I knew I should have mentioned Team Fortress 2 and Overwatch and some of the other videos that have easily been debunked with no issues. However, I focused on the one that actually gained massive amounts of attention and to some people ruined the credibility of their channel. Of course, that was shrugged off somewhat, but they go on to say that, you know, just because you create a theory doesn't mean you have to believe it. Yeah, that's great, and I would hope with some of these theories you wouldn't believe, like, like you said in your video, that Mario isn't a sociopath, you know what I'm saying? But the problem is, is that your impressionable audience does believe it, and they take it as fact. And if you disagree with game theory videos, they end up leaving comments like, kill yourself, you uneducated fuck. It's not the game theorists' fault themselves that they have bad apples because every community has them, but the way that their content is presented like fact causes these bad apples to show out worse than in most other communities. Also, they try to act like the videos couldn't be cut down in length if they tried. Uh, what's really hilarious about this is they had no issue before doing diet theories and, you know, getting super into depth, arguably, just as in-depth as they get now, and they kept the length of the videos down. But what's also really funny about this is I actually decided to re-edit those videos just by taking out some things like merchandise promotion, channel promotion for others, long and drawn out skits and jokes. I was able to cut minutes off of these three videos. So this point makes really no sense. It's incredibly easy to chop a few pointless minutes off of your video by taking out things that aren't pertinent or that aren't building upon the theory. If I can do it and the video at least somewhat resembles the original video and can easily get the theory across, they most certainly can do it too with professional editors. I'm not saying that they don't edit these videos either. I obviously said in my video that they spend a lot of time editing these videos and Matt Pat himself said it takes over 100 hours to make a single video, which I do believe him. I'm saying that they leave in some things that could be better off taken out of the video. Obviously, that's my opinion, and that's the opinion of a lot of older fans, but honestly, I don't think you're ever going to get that point, you know, across to some of these people. Number two, Matt Pat addresses me saying that he cannot take criticism. In doing this, he basically says, I've only really addressed hate one time in that Pope situation. He gives a few more facts that I genuinely didn't know, like that it was somewhat region specific, as in people picked were representing certain countries, and he represented America. Regardless, I do not hate the fact that he went. He's acting as if I was like genuinely mad or upset that he went because I said I thought PewDiePie should have gone not knowing of that region specific catch. In fact, I congratulate him, I mean it was obviously a memorable experience for him and I'm sure it was a huge achievement for him. But just because a couple thousand people disliked his video and were upset with the decision to add him into this group, he acted as if an internet-wide hellstorm inflamed him in his channel. He barely caught that much flack for it, truthfully. I think his response, you know, with the sad piano, overdramatic acting, was absolutely over the top. The reason people think you cannot take criticism is exactly because of that. Your response came off as super overdramatic, and as a result, it made you look like you couldn't take some simple criticism from some people saying they didn't like your theory. That's the entire point I tried to make. Regardless, I know I worded it bad, I definitely admit that. 
but you saying in your response, I had so much fun making that theory and was excited to release it, but the hate and ridicule it got was crushing. Okay, how about considering the fact that the theory was severely flawed from the ground up and was subject to ridicule regardless because sometimes people just aren't gonna like the theory. I understand it's a theory about a video game, however, some people take this stuff super seriously. Every video you put out could literally be like a new bible to some people. And when you're talking about one of the most toxic gaming communities in history, Undertale fans, I'm not saying all Undertale fans, some Undertale fans take it way above the extreme, right? When you're talking about this group, you can't just drop an incredibly flawed theory and expect it to go over well. Truth be told, you cannot release a super flawed theory about a game that obviously has a bad community and just expect things to be all okay. Not all Undertale players are toxic, but take Markiplier's playthrough of the game as an example. He was harassed by the viewers based solely on what path through the game he wanted to take. He didn't want to play the pacifist way or whatever, the way that's supposedly the correct way to play. So in turn, he was harassed by assholes, and it led to him stopping making those videos. That's how the Undertale community can be. Some of them are harsh and brutal, some are alright. But you cannot make a flawed theory that has more holes than Swiss cheese, and then give a sob story as to how crushed you were, and how symbolic it was that you gave the Pope a copy of Undertale. It was not symbolic at all. In my opinion, I mean, you, you just gave the guy a digital code to a game he'd never consider playing, and even if he did, he's easily outside of the target audience for the game, and regardless, likely doesn't have a computer to download the game on, or the time to invest into it. It was just a bad decision. I understand that maybe it meant something to you, but come on, you have to see where they're coming from that point. However, I do give MatPat a lot of credit for at least responding to my points respectfully, without just going into damage control mode. He kept his composure and he made his points, even if I don't agree with them. But you can't wonder why people think you can't take criticism if you apparently only respond to it one time. Notice how I respond to virtually all of my comments, even if it's criticism of me, even if it's a snarky snapback. It's showing that you can at least accept that somebody is criticizing you by just responding. Number 3, Matt Pat addresses the fact that his fanbase is a load of children and he did it in literally the worst way possible. He tried to use analytics to be accurate as to what age his viewers are. He tries to point out that 14 to 18 is his primary age range and basically uses this as a crutch to say it's not a load of kids here at Game Theory. What he doesn't ever mention to anyone is that you have to be at least 13 years old to have a Google account, and even then, you can't watch or view restricted content, which is obviously a growing trend on YouTube. So why he would think a bunch of 9 year olds would actually show up in that age range is beyond me, but he surely doesn't address the fact that little kids would lie about their age in order to have YouTube accounts, so therefore, his analytics are at least a little bit skewed. It's pretty obvious based on some of the comments that I've gotten that the primary age range of Game Theory fans post Five Nights at Freddy's is not 14 to 18 because of a very few obvious factors. Spelling, account names, profile pictures, ability to reason, etc. are all really clear signs and if the wave of Game Theory fans who left stupid comments or any signal of the average age of a Game Theory fans, it is definitely not 14 to 18. Matt Pat, I'm sorry to tell you this, but your analytics aren't gonna work in this situation. So now that I've at least tried to word things better or refute what Matt Pat said, I also want to take the time to explain my stance on Matt Pat a little bit. Since people think that I hate Matt Pat and he I think he's the devil, that definitely isn't the case. Matt Pat may have made some bad choices in my eyes, but I don't hate him. I hate the direction that Game Theory as a channel took, and that's perfectly acceptable, and that's why I've been unsubscribed for a while now. These videos aren't made to attempt to destroy Game Theory or MatPat, they're just opinion videos. They're videos I make to express my views on the community around me. I don't wish ill will on Matt Patter's channels. I hope he gets more success, but I also hope that he takes the right steps and tries to at least factor in some of the older concepts of Game Theory more. I don't hate the Game Theorist fanbase. I hate the ones that ruin the image of the fanbase as a whole. Plenty of Game Theorists came to my channel and concisely made their points without looking stupid, 
and at least got me to look at things in a different perspective. Matt Pat did the same in that live stream, and while he watched my video, honestly, it was kind of an honor. He's got almost 9 million subscribers on his channel. I hope he gets more success, and while he watched my video, he got his chat rated. Also, Matt Pat lost a fan in the storm in Texas, Hurricane Harvey, or it's so currently believed. This was actually a really sad thing to hear, and I definitely offer my condolences. In respect of Dominic, I think that was apparently the victim's name, and everyone affected by the hurricane, I ask you to please donate to a trusted fund for victims, and I'll probably even stream or something this weekend in order to hopefully raise a little bit more awareness to that as well. Anyways, I'm glad I could clear some things up, offer a rebuttal to MatPat, and hopefully entertained you once again. If you're new around here, make sure to click subscribe for all of my future videos, and please guys, let's not have these comments full of hate, let's learn to be respectful.